Welcome back to my channel. And it must not be always the fastest board or CPU. Also bad as ones which are just ridiculous low performers can give us here a reason for an interesting review. For today I prepared a board which I guess came out of an Olivetti PC. Yeah, and this board is populated with an incredible slow 20 MHz 486 SX CPU. Well, we will have a closer look at the board, we will do some benchmarks and take a closer look at some upgrade possibilities. Then let's have a closer look at the board here we got. As you can see already, it is not a common AT sized board. Instead, it is bigger and won't fit into a common case. Yeah, over here we have our CPU, an Intel 486SX clocked at 20 MHz. Yeah, the difference to a DX CPU is that the SX doesn't have a floating point unit, so to cover the low end market with cheaper CPUs, Intel did that. Same with the 386SX with the lower data bus, as well with the Celeron later on with the lower cache. Yeah, next to the CPU uh, we can see an empty socket for upgrade purposes, which we will use later on in this video. The bus clock here is fixed with a 40 MHz crystal divided by 2 for the 20 MHz, so this is a given fact here we need to deal with. Yeah, in the middle we got here 8 MB of RAM and next to it on a very unusual position the AT power connector. Yeah, over here the two BIOS EEPROMs and the keyboard BIOS comes in a nice ceramic 8742 microcontroller chip. Yeah, we have also four ISA slots for upgrades uh, and the chipset is made by VLSI. Yeah, this board provides an onboard IDE controller and also a floppy connector as well. Yeah, also not that common is the integrated video card. We have here the WD90C11 video chip and 512 kilobytes of video memory. Yeah, on the side here uh, we have a VGA connector, parallel and serial connections, as well as PS2 mouse and keyboard support. Yeah, so all in all, this is a highly integrated uh, 486 board, which can use, which we can use right away without any additional cards. But there is uh, one important part missing here on the board: the level two cache. Yeah, the CPU itself comes up with eight kilobytes of level one cache, but I don't know many 486 boards which doesn't come up with a level two cache. So with a 20 MHz uh, CPU without floating point unit, also 20 MHz bus clock and a missing level 2 cache, we cannot expect much performance here. So then let's uh, do some benchmarks on the setup before we talk about some upgrade possibilities. So then let's switch on. We have here a Phoenix BIOS dated in 1989. Yeah, and the BIOS itself is really very basic. There is not much to set here. Time, date, some drive configuration. Yeah, and the CPU speed we can set also to slow. How the hell someone has the idea to set a 20 MHz 486 CPU to slow? Yeah, and we can enable BIOS and video shadowing as well. But that's all we can do here so far. So then let's go on with some benchmarks. SpeedSwiss shows here a 486 SX CPU at 20 MHz with a benchmark index of 7.56. At the memory test we can clearly see the 8 KB of level 1 cache, but then the throughput is fully going down and end up with a memory throughput of a bit over 12 MB. And the level 1 cache got a data throughput of about 20 MB. So this is already very low for a 486 which I have ever seen so far in action. At Norton Sysinfo we can get a CPU score of 43.2 which is in between a 386DX33 and a 486DX33. Yeah, Dr. Hardware is also always very interesting for some benchmarks and gives us here 8660 points for integer calculations and the expected very low value of 238 for floating point operations because of a missing floating point unit. A benchmark for the video card gives us here an index of 2.9, which is also in the lower range of an ISA video card. 
Yeah, and with all that measurements, we can of course not expect much at Doom. It is a full slideshow and absolutely unplayable. Yeah, no wonder we end up here with a frame rate of 7.8. Also PC player at 320 by 200 can bring it not much over 3 frames per second and 3D bench is ending our 3D tests here at a low value of 12.8 frames. Calculating some fractal images in Fractint, which is very demanding on a floating point unit normally, shows here how slow a machine can be without a FPU. But this is in our case here the only example where a floating point unit would be used by a software. Okay, so this setup here seems to be slower than a 386 with 40 MHz. I have no clue what was really the idea behind to produce something like that. But I found an interesting article in a magazine from 1991. I can recommend to read the whole article, it's very interesting and you can find a link below for that. Yeah, in this article we can find also the answer to this question. Intel hopes that by extending its 486 line downwards, it can slow the advance of AMD's speedy 40 MHz 386 clones. Intel killed its own 286 offspring by introducing the 386SX and then running ads disparaging the 286s, once AMD and Harris began producing superior 286s. Yeah, it is now to Intel's advantage to kill the 386s. Yeah, definitely interesting article and also here they show that the 486SX20 is slower than a good 386 setup. Yeah, but then let's move on with some upgrade possibilities. We got here an empty socket. On a silk screen we can read 487SX. So the first possibility is to put here a 487 CPU. Yeah, this is not only a uh, a floating point unit with this numbering 487 as we know from uh, for instance the 386 with the 387. Um, this is basically a complete 486 CPU with included floating point unit and would deactivate the SX CPU on the board. So at the end this is just a common 486DX uh, CPU we know already. Uh, this thing has just an additional pin, um, it's acting like also an overdrive CPU, um, which is deactivating the SX CPU on board. But uh, what benefits would this bring at the end? Yeah, well, due to the fact that we still stick to our 20 MHz, we just got the floating point unit and this would show absolutely no performance improvements at our benchmarks. Expect Fract int, which is using heavily the floating point unit. So it is wor is it worth uh, to upgrade the board with this 487? Yes, only if you make uh, cut drawings and playing around with Fract int. For all the common software we retro fans are dealing with, it's absolutely useless. Yeah, but we still have a second option left. I got here an original packed. Uh, Intel Overdrive processor, specially made uh, for 16 and 20 MHz 486 SX setups. Yeah, I'm very curious um, what kind of speed up this thing will bring here in this board. So let's check out the box here. We have a, a nice window where we can see underneath the ceramic processor inside. Yeah, so what can we read here? Uh, this Genio Intel Overdrive processor is designed for use in virtually any 16 or 20 MHz 486SX CPU based systems. The Intel Overdrive processor uh, for Intel 486SX CPUs based system is a powerful single chip performance booster that allows a simple yet dramatic upgrade. Ooh. Installing the Intel Overdrive uh, processor in your uh, SX CPU based system will increase your PC's performance uh, by up to 70%. Okay, let's see. We will check this definitely. Yeah, based on Intel's innovative Intel 486DX2 technology, so in this is actually the interesting part. Uh, this overdrive has the, uh, the clock doubling um, technology inside, so um, we can expect with this uh, overdrive um, a CPU, internal CPU clock of 40 MHz and of course external clock will remain at 20. So this uh, overdrive processor is nothing more than a, a DX2 uh, chip 
um, with a front side bus of 20 MHz and internally, the, internally, internally <laughs> then 40 MHz. Yeah, then um, I think we will open the box now to see what it with what it comes up inside. So it's always nice to open something like that to see what it's inside. Ooh, nice. Okay. So what do we have here? So over here we have our CPU nicely protected here with this plastic Intel Overdrive ODP 486SX 20 megahertz with a spec code of SZ699. So uh, it's written here 20 megahertz. This means we have a front side bus of 20 megahertz required and a chip doubling technology inside to 40 megahertz. Very interesting. So what do we get here? So user guide and utility software. So interesting. So what do we have here? Intel overdrive processor chip removal kit. Ah, yeah, this is this very nice tool um, which can help a lot to remove uh, chips from normal PGA sockets. So, very nice to get this here. So, what else do we have here? So, we got some software, Intel Overdrive Processor Utilities to install place. Okay, la la la. Uh, we will see this later. Definitely interesting what is on this disk. So important notes for IBM users. Okay, and we have not the IBM. So and we have ooh, a nice documentation here available. So what do we get here? Congratulations on your purchase on Intel Overdrive processor. Yeah, thank you. Install the Overdrive processor, which is based on DX2 technology, will double the internal clock speed of your computer's microprocessor, increasing overall performance up to 70%. Yeah, I'm really curious about the benchmarks later. So overview, overdrive processor without heatsink for 16 or 20 megahertz uh, systems. Ah, and these are the other overdrives. Also we know they have a heatsink on there with the <coughs> higher clock rates. So very nice and interesting documentation we got here also. Um, yeah, also for the 486 CPUs, the SX ones, and there are the ceramic ones we have on our board, and there are also versions existing um, <coughs> in a, a PQFN package, which is soldered on the board. This is not the case here on our board. Very nice and interesting. Okay, a lot of nice pictures and explanations of the socket, how to deal with this uh, removing tool. Okay, interesting. Look at that. You should put always the removing tool between the socket and the CPU. Obviously, some people tried already <laughs> to remove also the socket from the board. So, uh, interesting fun fact beside that. So, quite nice and interesting documentation I got here, and also very nice, uh, high quality. Uh, uh, paper they were using here. Interesting. So, um, at the end, we will now put the CPU in the board. So, what the heck? Oh, it's from the side. Oh, so, the plastic is already oh, somehow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and here we got it. This nice purple ceramic overdrive processor. Also, with these nice letters here, overdrive, um, a quite nice CPU. We have here a date code of 1989, and on the serial number, we can see. Uh, uh, the two means here it's uh, 1992 in calendar week 49 this was produced so very interesting and yeah let's go with upgrading
Yeah, once we booted up, let's first check what we have here on the disk which was included in the overdrive box. So then let's start the overdrive exe and mm, this nice beautiful retro sound of a 3.5 inch floppy drive. So okay, Intel overdrive processor utilities, interesting. So let's see what is coming here. We got here now some nice fancy animations. Oh, this is nice, an airplane. So this looks quite uh, simple by today, but back in the times it was very cool to have this in kind of animations on the computer. I remember this and congratulations here on our overdrive CPU. Nice. So what do we have here? Intel overdrive processor diagnostics. Let's try this. The Intel Overdrive Processor Diagnostic Software has detected an Intel Overdrive Processor. Nice. And now it's doing some basic checks. Integer, integer unit, floating point unit, some cache checks. Yeah, it looks very fancy. I'm not sure if this is some really tests or just some commercial stuff. Let's try this out. Again, some Intel animations. So back in the 90s, they were very concerned about some cool animations and this looks so dramatic here with overdrive and so. And again, we got some nice images and some animations. Yeah, what does an Intel overdrive processor do? And so on and so on. Uh, quite nice made stuff for back in the days. Um, you might like to see when you got this new overdrive processor to boost your system. So then let's go on with the benchmarks on the overdrive. At Spitzes we can see now F486DX at 40 MHz and it comes up with a rating of 15.46 which is the double value of what we got before on the SX20. The higher internal clock speed is very good visible on the cache speed, but then it's again going full down because we still have 20 MHz on the bus. At the end we have a cache throughput of 27 MB which is 35% higher than before and about 15 MB of memory throughput. Norton Sysinfo comes up with 73 points, which is now above a DX33. At Dr. Hart we can see now a significant difference at the floating point unit with 7550 points, compared to 238 we had before. Also the integer performance is much better now due to the doubled CPU clock. But all that does not help so much. Our video performance just increased a little bit to a value of 3 instead of 2.9. And that we can see again at Doom. Now a bit faster, but still we just get 10 frames at the end. And this is still a slideshow and not playable. PC player and 3D bench could increase the performance between 40 and 60%, which is not far away from the promised 70%. But yeah, for gaming, where is the difference? If I get 3.2 or 5.1 frames as in PC player, it is still very slow. Yeah, but at mass intensive software and the usage of the floating point unit, we can clearly see what is going on now. The SX20 needed 44 minutes to calculate this image, while the overdrive with its, with its included floating point unit is able to finish it in 53 seconds. So this is more than 50 times faster. If we summarize this in a chart, we can see that the overdrive is of course boosting the system, but at the end it does not kick you that far to play Doom or something like that. I am pretty sure back in the days where in an office cut applications or extra stuff was used heavily, this upgrade makes sense, but for us retro gamers this overdrive is just a nice to have and in this case it's cool looking on the board beside the SX ceramic CPU, Yeah, but still you have to stick to pre-Doom games. Yeah, in, it's a slow 486, but still you can nicely enjoy Pinball Dreams 2 or the iconic Prince of Persia game. Or do you still remember this one? This little game? Yeah, Blockout, the 3D version of Tetris. Or the really old stuff as Sokuban. Yeah, all that you can enjoy and play nicely on this slow clocked 486 machine. And you even don't need an overdrive for that. I had a lot of fun to play around with this setup and for some reasons I really like it. Yeah, that was it for today and I hope you liked the video and please subscribe and thumbs up if so. 
Also leave me some comments below if you want to share something with me or the community. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.